had a hard time filming this, making time to sit down and do this because something in me, first of all, I was exhausted. Second of all, I had such resistance. I'm not going to lie. I had such resistance in sitting down here. And now I know why. Before we get into it, you're not ready for this. None of us are ready for this. So before we get into it, I am putting a pause on the live video readings. You know, it was a good experiment, uh, but what I found was that people would pay for a half hour and then stay on for an hour and a half, despite me trying to get off <laughs> the video, which is exactly why I have my business set up the way I do in the first place. So we're going to hit pause on that. Sorry to all of those who were respectful that there are some people who ruin it for others, but um, I, I need a rest. So there's that, but I am still doing my standard readings. Those are fine. So just go to angelsouls444.com if you'd like to sign up for one of those. And of course, if you are watching this before September 13th, get your ticket for the Metatron Live on the Bright platform. We're gonna be connecting with Archangel Metatron. He's all about intuition, strength, you know, wisdom. He's the keeper of the book of life and, you know, how to, how to do your ascension in a way that is going to serve not only you, but the collective. And that's important because we're gonna dive right into that part usually, and I've said this before, <laughs> I have said this before, where when I'm, you know, getting ready to do video content, I start getting the messages in. There has been so much messaging about how people have been taken off the path, naming the spiritual path. You know, false gurus are not a new thing. We've had those forever. But as I've brought up many years ago, we have this spiritual awakening. There have been spiritual awakenings going on for quite some time. But we have this spiritual awakening and everybody's spiritually sidestepping. They're in this false positivity, uh, fake vibes only, you know, <laughs> doing all of that stuff. And I was, it was starting to look very promising. People were starting, we were all there. Because if it, you know, whenever you had your spiritual awakening, there was something very comforting about that. And it might have felt like you were coming home. It might have felt um, very uplifting. And then the hard work started to come in. And this is what people were not understanding, that uh, spiritual ascension or spiritual growth is messy. It's not sunshine and rainbows. Then around 2015, we see this very odd phenomenon of shallow readings coming out and just flooding social media. I've mentioned before that I have seen, because I've been watching this, because it's, it's been too weird. And now, uh, guys, if you look at my channel, I used to get, there was a period of time there in 2019 where my channel was taking off. I'm getting 100,000 views on my weeklies. And now sometimes I just get over 1,000. How did that happen? I haven't changed my content. Not really, not drastically. It's not as if I completely shifted industries and went off onto something else, right? And I'm looking at other creators to see, who, you know, the ones that came out around the time I did or even before me, and they're putting out this really good information that people need to hear and they need to take it in and you need to implement it. Not being spoon fed everything. Not just coming in and going, oh, I'm just here to be inspired and then I'm going to move on with my life. But doing real work, the people who are really putting that information out there, they too are only getting one to 2,000 views within a week on their material. Now, me as a human, obviously, this is what I put my heart and soul into, so that's frustrating, obviously. <laughs> yeah, but then... There was this feeling, I just kind of let it go. I'm like, whatever, that's the nature of social media. If people don't want to hear it, you don't want to hear it. I mean, I'll show up for those who want to be here. And then over the past few days, I've been getting this messaging of, you're not ready. Not me. We are not ready. I've been saying here in the Northern Hemisphere, we're coming into fall, and I've been saying that the fall feels like there's a lot of uh, things that we haven't seen before, things we couldn't have imagined, 
potentially. As always, energy could always change. That's why I don't typically do the predictive stuff because, you know, and there are even people out there who have egos about that too. Well, I'm not afraid to predict. Good for you. <laughs> like, it's not an ego competition here. We're in some deep, you know what, here. One of the things I feel is coming up would be um, there's something around poison. And let me say this too. Everything I say here is not to scare. And if you are someone who is scared, I'm sorry, I love, I'm all over the place. Um, <laughs> because there's so many things coming in here. Um, if you're somebody who's scared, ask yourself if you're just playing the victim. Because when I hear stuff like this, I'm grateful that I know. I don't lay down and start whining and crying and saying, oh dear. I stand up and say, okay, what do we got to do? How can we come together? How can we get through this? I'm like, I'm shaking as I say this. This is, um, I'm not scared. It's not that. It's a different, <laughs> it's not a scary kind of thing. It's a whoa kind of thing. Like, whoa. So much for chilling in Netflix, okay? No, there's too many things taking our attention away. There, there's another long drawn out process that I'll get to here in a moment, but going back to how people probably have been purposely misled, spiritually speaking, and uh, people don't even realize it because people... It kind of goes hand in hand with another problem, and that is uh, about half of people, I guess, here in the United States have broken empathy. Half. Nearly half. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Trolls. People whining and making victims of themselves over nothing. I'm not talking about people that have actually had something happen to them. I'm talking about, like... Ugh, people want you to fawn all over them. They're going to find any reason that they've been harmed so that you have to feel sorry for them. Um, you know, the hatred people have towards one another. Being on social media, I watch social media, so I see the things that are going on and things that feel like it's a one-way road. It's not. And we know the surface-level battles that we have been uh, engaged in have little to do with what's really going on. And that is, it is a battle of good and evil. I don't know how else to put it. So I could go on for hours about how we're seeing people finally standing up and saying, no, we're not doing that. We might have some things coming up this week as far as like the railroad and um, I think Starbucks people are out there too right now and if you sat there and you rolled your eyes or you went oh my god and if you're somebody especially who's angry that a fictional fish character the little mermaid that she's been cast by a black woman get off my channel get off my channel I oof. get off my channel stupid so stupid it isn't the kind of battle that we see on the surface, but a battle of good and evil. And we're not ready. So, I, I will tell you that currently, as of the recording of this, I am feeling something about banking structures falling apart. Now, this is going to have, if this happens, it'll have a couple, like it feels like blackouts. They're actually saying blackouts. And, oh God, <laughs> what will happen, it'll work in some people's favor because it might wipe out your debt. I have no idea. I don't know how that works. Um, and yet for others, you might lose your money. So um, do not go rushing to the bank to get your cash. Don't do that. Don't be a selfish, greedy human being and go flood the stores. We already failed that test from that thing that happened before. Remember when we were all awful human beings and trying to get toilet paper? <laughs> you remember? Stop doing that. This is just a current energy that I feel. And if any of us got our egos out of the way and started to actually do spiritual practice for peace, 
to bring peace into our lives, to have compassion. If people who have broken empathy actually worked on it, which they won't, they think they're perfect, they think there's nothing wrong with them, and yet at every turn, with every breath, they're exposing themselves. And we get so taught that those people are the ones who have life right because nothing bothers them. And then we have others who do have empathy trying to emulate them, and now we have more broken people. What's the solution? I don't know. How can you get people to wake up? I've been doing this. The third week of September will be my ninth anniversary on YouTube. I haven't seen much change. I like that the younger generation is standing up, seeing what they got to say. My nose was itching. Uh, so some people try to pose like they're the victim and they're going into victim mode. Listen, there are things coming. There will be problems with water. The earthquakes are getting more and more intense. That's going to be happening. So we're all going to get a wake up call. I think what it comes down to is that you can either have a gentle wake up call by doing the work now, the real work. Let me spare you some time on some of these readings. He loves you. He's just not ready. He's totally your twin flame. You guys are meant to be together, but it's a third party situation. No judgment, no judgment, um, you know, pretty soon he'll leave his wife and then you can be together because you're twin flames. I'm a feisty person, but definitely not violent. <laughs> I'm so not violent. But man, this makes me want to tear my hair out. And people are eating it up. It's scary. It is so scary. If you are somebody who doesn't have broken empathy, the best thing you can do is to stop trying to save those who have denied their souls, have denied their soul light, and they think the way to get along in life is to take advantage of others. Stop giving in to them. I know it's going to hurt to stand back and watch them flail and panic, and you're going to want to jump in, but you can't. Now, if it's your kid or something like that, that's different. But, <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm talking about grown people who should be making their own way and who've done nothing to try to be the best person that they can be. You, you can't give in to them anymore. We need, as we keep talking in, in the spiritual talk, we talk about, um, you know, light and, and all of that, but... It doesn't, ha you don't have to use that language. You don't have to see it that way. It's just people are so absent. They're so, uh, yeah, I'm hearing a denial of self. And, and I was telling somebody else this where, you know, once you have a denial of self, you, you have all this empty space. And that empty space can be taken up by lower frequencies. How many times have you had a narcissist in your life? And you know they're a narcissist, but you love them. You know, you try to deal with them. And they start playing games with you. Like they don't answer your text. You're expected to answer their text right away. Or they're going to yell and scream and holler and play the victim. Um, but they can mess around <laughs> and, and play games. Big sign of a narcissist. I know this from life experience. Okay. Much life experience around this. They will change the time and change the location. I say this to everyone all the time to give them a heads up. Why do they do that? And you'll see either enablers or other narcissists go, that's not true. That's not how it is. They do that so you'll chase them around. They do that for control. I was just, yesterday I had to call a customer service line and this guy with a, a really wonderful voice gets on and he asked how he can direct my call and I said, I need to speak to somebody about X, Y, and Z. And he starts clicking around and goes, okay, what's the number or whatever? So I give it to him and then he stops and goes, you know you can just look this up yourself online. 
And I said, I did that and nothing was coming up. Well, if nothing came up, then it's this, this, and this. And then you got to do this, this, and this. Now, how many of you are sitting there, especially if you work in customer service, and you go, you don't know what we go through. I don't care what you go through. Oh, am I being a Karen? Okay, I've worked in customer service. Even if I'm having a bad day, it doesn't mean I need to make sure somebody else has a bad day. It doesn't mean that I get to not do my job, <laughs> right? And I was not being rude to this guy, perfectly pleasant. I said like one sentence to him before he started in. And um, he didn't start in, but he was just, uh, you could tell he was very reluctant. And I didn't like that he was talking down to me. He had this tone and it was just, ugh. And so many of us have become numb to that. We just accept it as real. Or we see these, this is another thing too, these other creators, I was saying that, you know, they're doing so much work and they're not getting the views. From a social media standpoint, they're getting honored in other ways. But they're so tired. You could just see that they're so tired. And they're just like, okay, I just got to give people what they want so I can get back to, you know, this thing where I'm actually appreciated or this thing where people are actually showing up and wanting to hear what I have to say. That's so unfortunate because they are showing up to give information to help people grow and get prepared for these things that are coming. And I don't want to say they're getting shunned. It's not bad. They're definitely not being taken seriously. All right, so there's that. Then we'll get on here to the cards. It's just sad. It's just very sad. And, uh, you know, I do appreciate everybody who does show up and take their spiritual practice seriously. It, oof, it goes right through me when I see someone who pops up and you can tell they're just a very shallow reader trying to act like, you know, by pulling some tarot cards, they're helping you spiritually grow. That's, that's not what it is. You notice I start off most readings with a message that's coming through, whether you want to call that mediumship or whatever. Um, I start with that. And how often do people put time stamps and go, she rants and raves until the 17 minute mark. Here's where the real reading starts. Put a clown emoji under them. I mean it. A bunch of fools. Empathetic people. Your strength is in your empathy. Don't dim that for anybody. The only people who are going to be threatened by that are the ones we're trying to um, get away from. Okay, so be aware. All right, what do we have here? <sighs> yeah. So these two came out kind of together. <laughs> so we have the beloved and eternal embrace. This reminds me of like that twin flame thing, karmic cycle, um, not being able to get off the, the wheel here. The beloved though is a soulmate. So this can definitely, the two of these together, I think is indicating some of you out there are going to be having some sort of interaction with a fellow human that wakes you up. Now, how most people would read this is that, oh, it's romantic. You have this romantic partner. Some of you are actually married and sitting there going, oh, do I have my real partner? Because I'm bored with the one I got, the one I chose when I was young and now I'm in my 40s and I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah, that's because you have, uh, well, check on the astrologer, but there are all these things that happen, or I guess around the age of 42, that change your perception. Again, check with an astrologer. I'm not, I'm not that person. So they can <laughs> speak to that um, a little bit more. And I remember when I turned 42 around that age, I, it really occurred to me, like, I am so glad. Now, no offense to anybody who's in a happy marriage. I mean, good for you. But I was like, I am so glad <laughs> I did not meet those people who I thought I had this soulmate connection with. I'm so glad I didn't go down that road because it turns out like a lot of red flags there that I was overlooking. And part of that was from the society that we were in at the time. All right. Then all these flung out together as well. We have revelation, which is what this whole first part of this reading was all about. Have that re revelation, which changes our perception. Okay. That's I, when we say <laughs> you're not ready. I'm not ready either. I don't know what this is going to be. We can begin this together. Um, it's going to be something that's like, you see, it almost looks like a volcanic eruption to me. And then the sky clears and here is this vision that we have, this understanding, this clarity. And then we open things up for more inspiration. This is serendipity. All right. So 
we're not going to realize just how trapped we were until all this goes down. <sighs> Again, um, power outages, blackouts. I keep hearing tsunami, so there's probably going to be a tsunami somewhere. I mean, it's everything. It's everything you could possibly imagine. But it's going to be affecting areas that we thought, ah, oh, you know, we're fine. It doesn't happen here. It doesn't happen to us. <sighs> Ugh, and that's the problem. That's the problem. And that's what's going to keep people unprepared. Uh, the ego is broken. The ego has short-circuited. And now it, it was once in place to be our protection mechanism as we explore being human. <laughs> but now it is... Uh, too far gone I think I do want to say uh with the bright lives tonight I'm having the um the Archangel Metatron one and then I'm doing about every other week I'm going to be doing a live hangout where we will get more messages on current world energies and just bring up whatever needs to come through so you get extra messages through that and also in a couple of weeks uh I have to get that solidified but there should be Check the description box always on any of these videos because they are timeless. Um, there will be a live session on portals and what is a vortex and, and all of that. So make sure you're checking all that out. This is what we're working towards. Grace. So because we are such surface level creatures that can't seem to go deeper until we address some of this stuff. <laughs> we can't get to our grace until we figure this out. This is the goal. So this comes through peace. I can't tell you how many times people have said, oh, I've got this thing going on. And then we start going deeper with a message and they're like, okay, this is not, this is totally off topic. Like I'm, I'm talking about my career, get back to my career. You're not ready. You're not ready. Anybody who just answers your surface level question, they're not serving you. If you've gotten a reading from me and you came in with, it's fine to come in with a, you know, something that's on your mind, of course, that's fine. But comment down below if you came in with something that was just kind of like on your heart to say, and we started going deeper and that ended up helping you in a way bigger way than if we had just given you a shallow answer. Comment down below if you've gotten that. This is what we need to work towards. And this means having some grace and compassion towards others if you are one of those almost 50% of people who don't have empathy, you need to, uh, I don't know, figure it out because you're not our problem anymore. You're not our problem anymore. And when everybody starts realizing that and disconnecting their energy from you and you don't get to have their attention, you don't get to feel popular anymore, you don't get to feed, you will starve. You will wither away. We know this with aging narcissists. They end up dying alone. I'm not going to, um, I've never been one to tiptoe anyway, except for language and the social media platforms because they'll take you down and then nobody sees the message. But if you're somebody who, for example, you're a heterosexual woman and when a guy is saying awful things to you, you laugh and giggle and think it's cute. Now, there's always this uh, stupid argument here where it's like, oh, well, people let them be. They could be whoever they want to be. Mm, yes, um, but it, unless you are bringing down the curve, okay? <laughs> You're bringing that down, excuse me. Because the more you put up with, just in this example, the more you put up with that kind of behavior, the more these men think that that's acceptable and that it's even wanted by women. And they start acting like that even more. And then the good guys, they look like, like they're wimps, you know? Like they're, they, it, it's all this like smoke and mirrors kind of thing. <laughs> the, the good people end up getting hidden in favor of the ones who are acting like, uh, I don't know, like like a a show. You know what I'm saying? Like, anyway, <laughs> I can go on and on and on. I'm going to break this down into dailies. 
You don't even have to support me because I, I'm the only creator I know of, especially a spiritual practitioner out here who's coming out and saying stuff like this. I'm the only one I know of. And I get hate for it. Me even talking about men and women, I'll get hate for that. That's okay. You get the clown emoji. <laughs> I'm not afraid. <laughs> I'm not afraid. <laughs> okay. So take this seriously. And if even if you don't want to support me, I keep using that example of Patreon. I was putting extra readings up on Patreon and all you needed to access those was a dollar a month and hardly anybody showed up. A dollar a month. And when I said, okay, well, I'm putting a ton of work into these and there's hardly anybody who showed up. People who were signed up to give a dollar a month for those extra readings threw a fit and withdrew their dollar a month. <laughs> and all the while everybody else is going, well, we can't afford it. We can't. Even if you don't want to support me, get out there and support those astrologers, the real tarot readers, and hint, hint, they tend to be older, okay? I'm not saying that, because there's tons of younger, beautiful tarot readers out there. Of course there are. Um, but some of these other practitioners, these esoteric artists are getting overlooked and they have the most experience they have the most experience and nobody's paying any attention to them what is it is it ageism it's not on me i mean i'm, I'm saying like like i feel very fortunate to have as many subscribers as i do i never anticipated that in my life because when i got on in 2013 if you had 25,000 subscribers as a spiritual practitioner you were doing good <laughs> you were doing good um but i'm talking about some of these others that they're, they take their work so seriously. They're very grounded as well. And you can tell that they really care. All you have to do is like their videos. All you have to do is subscribe. It doesn't even cost you anything. All you have to do is share it. It's raising a lot of questions in my mind. And it's starting to get me fired up. And you know I'm not quiet when I'm fired up. So let's see. We're going to leave it there. Sending you love and take care.